Hello, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the Dandelion Knight Jean from Genshin Impact. I will be covering her bio and background, physical and personality traits, her abilities, and how she received her vision, among other things. With all that out of the way, let's start the video. So we will start with some general information about her. Her full name is Jean Gunhilder, and she hails from the nation of Mondstadt. She currently serves as the acting Grand Master of the Knights of Avonius. She has temporarily taken this role while the true Grand Master of the Knights, Varka, is on expedition. All of Jean's current titles are the acting Grand Master of the Knights of Avonius, the Dandelion Knight, and she's also called the Lion Fang Knight. And in the Genshin community, people like to use the title Soccer Mom to describe her. I mean, she's not the best waifu in the game, but come on, she's not that bad. She carries an animo vision, her combat roles are very versatile, she can be a main DPS, burst support, sub DPS, healer, she can do it all. Her birthday is on March 14th and she is a Pisces. She is between 20 and 21 years old, which means she is perfectly legal. She has a height of 5 foot 6 inches or 169 centimeters if you're anywhere outside the US. She is the daughter of Samus Pegg, a well established adventurer, and she is the daughter of Frederica Gunhilder a member of Mondstadt's highly achieved and recognized Gunhilder clan. She is a hardworking knight with a work ethic matched by few to none, no matter what the commission, even one as ridiculous as finding a lost cat on the tip of dragon spine in the coldest time of year in her sea breeze outfit. I have no doubt she will endure and bring back the cat along with hard nipples that would shape crystal ore better than any blacksmith hammer in Teyvat. She was first available to obtain on September 28th, 2020, which was day one of the official game launch. You can get her from the standard banner, but you also have a chance to obtain her from the limited character banners when you lose your 50-50, which, let's face it, it blows harder than Mona would blow if someone offered her 1 million Mora. Appearance-wise, Jean has a tall and athletic build and fair skin, she has gray blue eyes and medium length gold blonde hair tied back into a ponytail with a black bow. On her ears, she wears a pair of gold cross earrings. Her outfit, Favonius Devotion, is described to be neat, smart, and symbolizes her chivalry. She wears a white, blue, black, and red strapless shirt with a gold symbol and linings along with a long blue tailcoat attached to it. A pair of separate white sleeves, high-heeled knee-high boots with a gold pattern and black heels. She also wears a pair of blue gauntlets on both arms. Her summer outfit, Sea Breeze Dandelion, is described to be light and cool, but no less elegant. It is a blue and white outfit, the shorts stop at her upper thick thighs and continues up her abdomen. Her strapless blue shirt tucks into the bottom and she has a flowing blue tail coat with blue open toe sandals, perfect for the beach and those who have a foot fetish. If she ever finds time to take another beach trip, I'll gladly be the one to accompany her. But it has nothing to do with a foot fetish. And if you are curious, her cup size is a D. You're welcome. So on to her personality. Her devotion to her duties stems from two reasons, her upbringing as a child and Varka's teaching. Even though he consistently takes his duties lightly, his relaxed and unruly personality has contributed to her growth. She shows no resentment towards his attitude, instead vowing to ensure that the city will be more prosperous and welcoming when he returns. Her work ethic makes her well liked by both Mondstadt citizens, her fellow members of the Knights of Avonius, and is noted by other organizations. Although she prefers to use peaceful methods to solve her problems, she will not hesitate to use force if necessary. So, if you'd like a woman that can kick your ass, just let her know. She sees Vanessa as a role model because of her exploits and works tirelessly to maintain her legacy and Mondstadt safety. Whenever she feels troubled or confused, she often heads to the Great Tree in Windrise, where Vanessa's journey came to an end. In her story quest, Leo Minor Chapter Act 1, it shows just how much Jean will ignore her personal well-being for the sake of Mondstadt and its citizens. The Traveler is asked to give commissions to Jean by some of the citizens, and after arriving back at the Favonius headquarters, the Traveler is asked by Kaya to complete them as Jean is much too busy and feeling under the weather. The Traveler then finds Jean in a weakened state at the tree in Windrise and saves her from potentially being taken out by an Abyss Mage who flees, and the trio follow it and defeat it despite Jean's weakened state. They promptly return to Mondstadt where they say Jean is 
is needed at the Angel Share Tavern, but it turns out to be a surprise party hosted by her fellow knights to thank her for all the hard work she does for the good of the entire city. Also, Venti is there, but mostly for the free drinks. Now on to how she obtained her vision. Due to the many great deeds and selflessness of Jean, such as fending off external Fatui diplomatic pressure while simultaneously crushing Abyss Order plans, she was recognized as deserving a vision by the gods. She says she will never forget the day she received her vision. All had grown quiet, and the only thing she felt was the breeze flowing through her hand. The world seemed to fade away, save for the time-honored motto of the House of Gunhild for Mondstadt, as always. Now on to her voice actors. Her English voice actor is Stephanie Sutherland, and I looked at some other roles she's played. She has played Freya from Fire Emblem Heroes, and Ling Ju from SCO Alicization, which is a very minor side character which you may or may not have forgotten. I personally forgot until I looked at the picture. Her Japanese voice actor is Shiwa Saito, and she's played some more noticeable roles, although not as many as some of the other voice actors in the game. She voiced Hitaki Senjo Gahara from Monogatari series and Chloe von Einsburn from the Fate series. Now we will talk about her abilities. Her normal attacks are called the Favonius Blade Work. Her charge attack will launch opponents into the air using her Animo power and then they slowly fall to the ground which is great for crowd control. Her elemental skill Gale Blade allows Jean to focus the might of the formless wind around her blade and release a miniature storm, launching opponents in the direction she aims at, dealing massive animo damage. If you hold her skill, Jean will use the whirlwind to pull surrounding opponents and objects towards her front. The direction can be adjusted, but Jean is immobile during the skill duration. Now on to the main reason most people will use her, it is her elemental burst to Dandelion Field. Jean creates a swirling Dandelion Field around a large AoE, which launches surrounding opponents and causes massive animal damage. At the same time, she will instantly regenerate a large amount of HP for all party members, and the amount of HP restored will scale off a of Jean's attack. Continuously regenerates HP of characters within the AoE, and continuously imbues them with animo. It also deals animal damage to opponents entering or exiting the dandelion field. Now for the final part of this video, we will go over some of Jean's trivia. Her special dish that she can make is an invigorating pizza, which looks pretty yummy. I mean, pizza's always yummy. Who doesn't like pizza? Jean is only one of two Mondstadt residents who know Venti's true identity is the Animal Archon Barbados. The only other person who knows is Mondstadt's daytime bartender and nighttime Batman, the Luke. Which is strange because Venti literally summoned Storm Terror in front of Barbara, which they rode to the Golden Apple Archipelago. And she doesn't question this bard's identity? Kinda strange, miHoYo. Jean holds the Luke in high regards and gives him great respect for all he does to keep Mondstadt safe, despite no longer being a member of the Knights. She still often refers to him as her senior. Now I guess this would be a bit of a weird one, which was slightly mentioned in uh, one of her quests. Jean owns a pet tortoise, yes, a tortoise, which I've never seen in the entire game. Apparently she has the only one. If you aren't caught up on the lore, then one lesser known fact would be Jean is the older sister of Mondstadt's resident idol, Barbara. Their parents split up and it caused the two sisters to also be separated. Barbara was raised by their father and followed in his footsteps and became a deaconess with the church, while Jean was raised by their mother and took on the role of the Gunhilder clan and became a respectable knight with the Knights of Avonius. Both sisters do wish they could get to know each other better but both tend to put their duties first, especially the workhorse of Mondstadt Jean. One final piece of trivia, Jean loves romance novels and yearns to feel affection like she reads in the novel, but she puts her personal feelings aside for the sake of her city. Now Jean, listen to me. If you ever need someone, I'll be happy to give you that feeling. N no? You don't want a weeb who's willing to spend hundreds of dollars on gacha games? when I could be doing almost anything else and it would be less of a waste of time and money? Thank you for watching to the end. If you found it informative or enjoyable, or both, please leave a like. But other than that, I hope you have a good day, and I will catch you in the next one.